Alrighty. This here is XP Pens Artist 12 second gen. I've been wanting to get my hands on these for a little while and I had my doubts about it and many questions. Is 12 inches for a drawing tablet to use with your computer really big enough? What about the line wobble with those X3 pens? Have they solved that? How is this only $200? What kind of corners are being cut to keep that cost down? And most importantly, the same question that's probably on your mind, is this tablet good enough for digital art beginners? There was only one way to find out, so I dug through a stranger's couch, found what coins I could, went and got one for myself. XP Pen didn't ask for this review, they didn't send me this tablet, I was curious, went and got it, here we are. My thoughts be my own. I'm gonna blitz through the box contents, no ASMR unboxing here, sorry for you. Inside you get the tablet itself, of course, the 3-in-1 connector cable, the USB-A extender cable, the X3 Elite stylus, extra pen nibs, a pen nib remover, quick start guide, warranty booklet, cleaning cloth, and the final item of the digital art uniform, the drawing glove. I'm assuming that many of you watching this, considering buying this tablet, are probably at beginner level. Maybe you haven't used a device like this before. It's important to point out that this is not a standalone device. You have to plug it into a computer in order for it to work. This range of second gens comes in four different sizes and four different colors. This of course is the 12 or rather the 11.9 inch. It's slightly bigger than the first generation. The colors and the contrast have been improved too. It's bright enough for indoor use in a room with plenty of natural light coming in for sure. If you intend to use this outdoors with your phone doing some plein air painting under the summer sun, probably not going to be able to see that well. It now also has a fully laminated full HD display, so there's pretty much zero parallax here. And where the pen be, the ink floweth. The size is something to talk about here. At around 35 by 21 centimeters, this is an ideal size for someone with very limited desk space or who needs something quite compact to take on the go with them. Like now, I can just chuck this in my backpack with my laptop, head off to the coffee shop up the road for a change of scenery and get cracking. The downside of working with a screen the size is that desktop software tends to have a lot of busy interface elements and those can take up a large chunk of the screen. The other thing is that those interface elements can start getting really small, so you have to pay a little bit of extra attention to make sure that you hit the right thing. Getting here though, oh yeah, there's no stand in the box, and there are no little fold-out legs underneath. Lying this flat does not make for the best drawing experience, unless you're really into having constant neck pain or cosplaying as Quasimodo, you're gonna need a tablet stand. There are plenty of cheap options out there. One like this is great for a home desk setup, it's sturdy, I have plenty of movement options and I can rotate the tablet 360 degrees, pretend like I'm driving. But it can be a bit heavy and bulky when you're trying to keep your setup compact. So something like this Moft laptop riser works well enough to give at least a little bit of a better drawing angle and it also folds flat against the tablet, doesn't take any extra space. Uh, so something I noticed shortly after recording this, I was getting some strange behavior of my stylus on certain parts of my screen, sort of towards the lower ends of it. And it turns out this was actually being caused by the moft stand. Because when I removed it, the problem disappeared. And I think it had something to do with the two small magnets that are inside the stand itself. So that's just something to be aware of. When it comes to working with the tablet, we have all of these express keys. You get eight on the Artist 12, fewer on the smaller model, and more on the larger ones. These aren't essential, but they can be quite convenient for a beginner when you have very few tools and shortcuts that you really need to be using. As you get more comfortable with your drawing or painting software though, you might find that eight shortcuts is just not enough. Having a trusty keyboard nearby is going to work better. Connecting the tablet, you have this bulky 3-in-1 connector cable that can take up pretty much every port your computer's got. On one side we have the HDMI and two USB-A's which will connect to the computer or you can connect the red USB to a wall socket for power. The other side has the USB-C connector which goes here where we have two USB-C ports. The one with the plug on it though is for connecting through a single fully featured USB-C cable and that is sold separately. So if you have USB-C ports in your machine, want a neater cable setup, then you're probably going to need to purchase one of these. My thinking though is that if you can choose what color your tablet comes in, you should be able to choose what connector cable it comes with as well. I don't know if that's a bit of a pain logistically, but it's something I think XP Pen should consider. With that out of the way, the next item on the agenda is the driver, which you can find on XP Pen's website. After you download it, you're going to have this pen tablet application on your computer, where you can customize all the different tablet settings. It's fairly straightforward stuff, but there are a couple of things I want to point out. First, I had some cursor misalignment issues a few times when I plugged it in, so I had to hit this full area button. 
If you're left-handed, this is where you can change the tablet's orientation. By default, it's set to right-handed mode, so your express keys are going to be on the left. The pen is quite sensitive, which I'll get into in a moment. Here in the pen settings tab, you can adjust the pressure curve to suit your preference, change what the buttons on the pen do as well. If you are using this as an extended display, you can set one of your pen buttons or maybe one of your express keys to switch monitor so that you can send your cursor from one to the other without you having to grab your mouse. You can have different settings profiles for different applications. You can have one set of shortcuts assigned to your express keys for painting and critter, but then a completely different set assigned for when you switch over to Blender. Your shortcuts will automatically switch over when you switch between those applications as well. If you don't set a custom profile, then your settings will be global across each program. Lastly, there are some UI design issues, fairly minor, but there's one in particular that got me. You see this OK button over here? It kind of blends in with the background image and it's not obviously clear that you have to click this after making any changes to your settings in order for them to save. I would make my changes, just hit the X button in the top right and there was no message popping up saying, hey, are you sure you want to do that? You've got some unsaved changes. No, it would just close. I go into my painting software only to find that none of my shortcuts were working the way I programmed them. It took me a little while to figure out that this was the issue, but once you know about it, not a big deal, but it is something that could have easily been avoided, I think. Now, what about this pen and the drawing experience? The tablet comes with this X3 Elite stylus that we're seeing in XP Pen's newer tablets. It's comfortable to use, fairly light, cased in matte plastic and has two buttons along the side. I think they're pretty well positioned, I didn't have any accidental presses of them. There's no eraser on the back of this one, but if you are into that sort of thing, you can get their X3 Elite Plus stylus separately. The big claim here is that this new X3 pen technology has a vastly improved initial activation rate over the previous pens. So in other words, the minimum amount of force needed to start registering a line is a lot lower. This is far more important than how many levels of pressure sensitivity your pen has, and it's an area where Wacom's pen technology was always superior. So let's see, I'm going to hold the pen towards the back with a light grip and just drag it across the surface without applying any real pressure. And there we go, we have line down. That's actually really good. This is quite a step up from the Deco Pro, which I loved. According to XP Pen, the minimum activation force is now only 3 grams. What about the line wobble? This seemed to be an issue when the X3 pens rolled out with the Artist Pro 16 and Brad Colbert brought attention to that during his review videos. I'll test it out with some slow diagonal lines and I'm going to use a card here just because I don't have the steadiest hand. The lines do still have a little bit of wobble but if I speed up those lines it's less noticeable. As someone who is more of a painter rather than doing line art or comics this really doesn't faze me. You can add smoothing or stabilization in your application settings as well, but this can slow the performance down a little bit depending on what sort of machine you have. Other than that, the drawing experience is pretty good. Doing circles, I can easily get varied and consistent line weights. The pressure response is good, almost too sensitive for me. I feel it's a bit difficult to keep really light lines, but this may be partly because of my own paint control skills. I'm a little bit more of a sketchy attack the canvas with a brush sort of bloke than a controlled line art fella. But again, you can make these adjustments to the pressure curve in the tablet settings. It handles quick strokes well, and there's no weird blotches or tapering effects. Like I said earlier, this can start to feel a little bit small when you're working with desktop software. But what about using this with Android in apps that are designed for smaller screens? This is definitely an option, but it only works with some Android devices. Your phone has to have USB-C 3.1 with DisplayPort 1.2 in order to push out a video signal. I couldn't test this feature because like many phones, I only have USB-C 2.0. If you do have a compatible phone though, this is pretty neat in terms of having a really compact on-the-go setup. But mobile apps are also designed with touch in mind. This is not a touchscreen tablet, so for things like pinching to zoom or double tap to undo, you will have to reach for your phone screen. It's not the most intuitive, but you can get used to it. Also, you lose the express key functionality and any customization of the tablet and the pen when you connect it to a phone. There's no driver or anything that you install when connecting it to Android. So wrapping up, is this a good tablet for beginners? And I would say yes. If you're on a really tight budget, you're just getting started out, or if you need something that's really compact, then this definitely does the job. I would say though, if you can spare a few extra coins, I would step up to the 13.3 inch version rather, just to have a more comfortable drawing area. Then we have the price. I, mean, I picked this up for just under $200 on sale, which just blows my mind. You can get a tablet that's really quite good for such a low price. 
It would have been nice to have a tablet stand included, but considering what you're paying, it's not such a big deal to go and buy an accessory or two separately just to complete your setup. While Android compatibility is a nice feature in here, I wouldn't buy this specifically for that purpose. You'd be better off buying an affordable standalone tablet like the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, which I chatted about in my last video. Or if you prefer to save your money, go for an affordable screenless tablet with the same pen technology, then stay tuned for my review of the Deco MW, which will be coming next. That's all for now. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or thoughts about the Artist 12 second gen, and I'll see you soon for another video. You know, I can just stop there, I think. I mean, it'll be fine.